Uh, under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, failed leadership, violent crime has surged from 2019 through 2023. Homicides in America's cities increased by 18% in 2023 compared to 2019. Motor vehicle thefts in American cities increased by 105% in 2023 compared to 2019. Carjackings in American cities increased by 93% in 2023 compared to 2019. Aggravated assaults in American cities increased by 8% in 2023 compared to 2019. My bill, the Keeping Offenders Off the Street Act. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back here with a new video. Today, we're going to be checking out um, Speaker Johnson escorates Kamala Harris for taking few interviews as early voting starts. Okay, this is going to be amazing. I'll love us to check this video out together. Let's get right to this video. Good morning, everyone. This November will be the most important election in our lifetime. As we head home to our districts this October, House Republicans will continue to highlight the stark contrast between the successes of President Trump and the America First Republican policies with the catastrophic failed four-year record of Kamala Harris and far-left Democrat leadership. From struggling to put food on the table due to historic high inflation because of Kamala Harris's tie-breaking vote for the Inflation Expansion Act, to illegal immigrants invading our borders and constant chaos around the world, the failed leadership of Kamala Harris and far-left Democrat policies have put our nation and the American people at risk. That's true. The contrast has never been clearer. American families were better off under the successful America First policies of President Trump. With strong Republican leadership across the board in Washington, that means a Republican Senate, a Republican House, and President Trump in the White House, we will be able to implement the successful America First agenda to secure our borders, to get our economy back on track, and return to those the successful peace through strength national security policies. On the floor this week, we are continuing to fight the failed Democrat agenda, and we are joined today by Congressman Scott Fitzgerald of Wisconsin to discuss his legislation, the Keeping Violent Offenders Off Our Streets Act, which would combat the soft-on-crime policies of Kamala Harris and radical far-left left Democrats that have fueled the crime crisis raging across our country. I'm going to turn it over to Scott. Thank you, Chair. Uh, under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, failed leadership, violent crime has surged from 2019 through 2023. Mm. Homicides in America's cities increased by 18% mm. in 2023 compared to 2019. Motor vehicle thefts in American cities increased by 105% in 2023 compared to 2019. Carjackings in American cities increased by 93% in 2023 compared to 2019. Oh. Aggravated assaults in American cities increased by 8% in 2023 compared to 2019. My bill, the Keeping Offenders Off the Street Act, protects our communities by making a small but very important change to define bail bonds as an insurance product so that they may and must comply with federal insurance fraud laws and background check requirements. This change would also bring charitable bail funds under state insurance regulation, giving states the ability to better scrutinize the use of these funds. We've seen charitable bail funds in particular grow out of control following the George Floyd riots. The Minnesota Freedom Fund saw revenues increase to $42 million between 2019 and 2020. No doubt benefited from Senator Kamala Harris tweeting and encouraging her supporters to help fundraise for the group. Mm. Of course, we now know that the fund bailed out at least 65 violent offenders. We're awaiting trial, they were awaiting, awaiting trial on felony charges involving violence, physical threats, or sex crimes. This will bring needed oversight to this organization. There's 90 of these funds right now nationwide, and we look forward to seeing it pass on the floor this week. Yeah. I'll turn it over to Congressman Emmer. Thank you, Scott. Uh, at this moment, the House Financial Services Committee is starting its hearing with Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Gensler. 
In an era where bipartisanship can feel scarce, Gensler has done such a terrible job running the SEC that he has managed to unite members on both sides of the aisle condemning his failed leadership. Gary Gensler has worked co to consolidate his own power, even though it means crushing opportunities and, frankly, the financial future of this country. Rogue bureaucrats like Gensler are supposed to be working for the people, not reigning over them. He has wasted a large part of the SEC's resources to wage war on the Christians. Um, other violent crimes uh, where she was leading the charge to get them out of jail, the, the criminals, not protect the police officers. In fact, she's made public statements over the last few years criticizing the idea of adding more police to communities. And yet when you look at some of the cities that have the worst crime, who initially went down the failed road of defunding the police and then saw the devastation it caused in their communities, they're trying to hire more police officers now. And they're struggling to do it because they at least finally recognize they made a mistake. Uh, but once you taint that office by showing a community that the leadership of a city doesn't support the police, police will go elsewhere. You know, good existing police officers go to other departments. Young people who want a career in law enforcement are not going to go to a place where it's so volatile that they know the, that the leadership of that community doesn't have their back. So they go to other places where they know that the local community will have their back. And so that is the devastation of, you know, that kind of attitude of defunding police, demonizing police that people like Kamala Harris have supported mm. over the years. You know, when we leave here to go across the country in October and as much as we're going to miss you in this venue, maybe we'll come back every week, Mike. I don't know. We'll, you know, do that once a week and see who shows up. But uh, more than likely, that won't happen. But we will see you out on the road if you're there. But when you go to swing districts where a lot of us will be, you see the same thing playing out in every community, whether it's a swing state like Pennsylvania, where it just was last week, or whether it's, uh, you know, a community in California where they've got swing districts. You're hearing people express the same frustration with the Biden-Harris administration. The open border is still the top issue they bring up, and they're furious about it. And yet Kamala continues to do nothing while she's over there in the White House. She could go walk in the White House today and ask the president to reverse his policies that opened up the border, but she won't because she wants an open border. She's wanted that open border all her life. Again, she's on video talking about uh, how she wants to legalize people who come here illegally. And then when she tries to express, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm now for a secure border, and she's pressed on it, she says, my values haven't changed. Her values are far left liberal. They've been that way her whole life. She wants to ban fracking. She hasn't changed mm. her views on that. She wants to have an open border. Her views haven't changed on that either. You've seen her radical views. She cast a tie-breaking vote, as our conference chair, Elise, just talked about, to create the inflation that I hear about in every community I go to. Higher costs at the grocery store, higher costs at the gas station. Those are a direct result of not just the Biden administration's policies, but Kamala Harris's vote. And I'm not talking about in the Senate, where she might have been with 60 other people. I'm talking about Kamala Harris's vote when it was a 50-50 tie. And it could have gone down with her vote, and we could have had lower inflation with her vote, but instead she used her vote to raise inflation, her tie-breaking vote that jacked up the inflation that's crushing low- and middle-income families today. Her tie-breaking vote, Kamala Harris, was the vote that doubled the size of the IRS. And now some of those new agents that they've hired are going after the waiters and waitresses, making them pay higher taxes on tips, and then she claims that she wants to get rid of the tax on tips, yet she sicked an army of new IRS agents after those very same waiters and waitresses. So what she's done has consequences. We're going to be talking about this contrast because Donald Trump wants lower tax rates. Donald Trump wants to secure our border, and he did it before. Donald Trump wants sound tax policy where lower and middle-income families can actually benefit from the growth that comes with a healthy economy. Unfortunately, we don't have that today, but we had it when Donald Trump was president of the United States last time. And so when you look at all of those things, and not to mention, of course, 
He's always supported our men and women in uniform, and he'll continue to do that again. He'll stand up to the bad guys around the world. And right now, America is letting the bad guys around the world run roughshod over our allies and doing harm to America as well with no consequence. All that will change if we get President Trump back in office. And that contrast, I think, is going to be sharply shown through the month of October leading into the election November 5th. Uh, we're also going to vote today or tomorrow on the CR. And, you know, this is always a tough negotiation. The Senate wanted to try to spend more money, and our speaker stood up to the Senate and said, no, we're not going to do that. They wanted to play this Christmas Eve Omni game that they used to play, having an omnibus dropped on Christmas Eve and everybody, nobody's read the bill and it just gets voted on and everybody leaves town. We said no to that last year. And Mike Johnson as speaker is saying no to that again this year, which is so important to say, you know, we're going to change the way Washington works. We passed over 70 percent of the spending bills out of the House. The Senate has passed zero not a single bill out of the Senate. And so how do you have a negotiation when one side refuses to do their job? And so we're going to continue to at least do our job, and that starts tomorrow on the CR. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to the Speaker of the House. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Uh, thanks to, to all of you to being here. This is the uh, last one for a, a while until the election. We're in the home stretch, and we're exactly six weeks out from the election now. Uh, it'll be here before we know it. Can't get here soon enough from our perspective. Um, voters in Virginia, Minnesota, and South Dakota are already casting their first votes in the nation. They began that Friday, and in the next uh, two weeks, there'll be a number of states commence early voting uh, around the country. Um, and yet, uh, millions of Americans, as, as uh, our majority leader was just articulating here, they have no idea where Kamala Harris stands on major issues, and they have no way to ascertain mm -hmm. that because she refuses to sit down for real interviews. Uh, no tough questions have been asked. Um, and, and so people are just left to wonder. <clears throat> I think that's a big reason that our team is going to win in November. I'm very confident about this. I, I believe we're going to keep and grow the House majority, win the Senate, and win the White House as well. And we're going to put Donald Trump uh, back in the office. Uh, when, uh, when the continued resolution comes up on the floor this week, we uh, expect that to pass by a wide margin. Um, let me just be clear, everybody heard me here last week say that I thought the best play uh, under the circumstances was the CR with the SAVE Act. It's about a 90 percent issue in the country, no matter where we are in the country. Everybody understands that only U.S. citizens should vote in U.S. elections. Mm, sure. Uh, this was our opportunity to both fund the government and ensure the security of the election, but we came a little short of the goal line. So we have to go with, um, with the last available play. Um, by the way, I'll say that the 206 House Democrats... Okay, this was amazing. The briefing was really good. Um, the thing is that we are not far away from the election, uh, and I have positive feeling that Donald Trump is going to come back to office. Um, it, it, it's important for every American to know that <laughs> during Kamala Harris' tenure as a vice president, there was no changes in America. She actually did nothing. If you go look at her stats about what she changed in America, about what she did, the open borders is everyone evidence for you to know. She can shut down the borders today, but she chose to leave it open. You see the stats right here. Crime rates have increased. People are unable to own home. The borders are open. A lot of things are happening in America, guys, and we can't leave this to continue. Because if we leave America like this, it will be worse like really, really worst. This is one of the worst governments in American history during Kamala Harris session as a vice president. This is one of the worst governments entirely. The country is in serious, serious trouble. And America has to be great again. That is the main goal to make America great again. Because like not just this um, House of Republican leaders saying all this or Johnson speaking like Charlie Kirk have said it different people have spoken about this I've done my research <laughs> I have seen the stats I have compared between Donald Trump era and Joe Biden which ones was was the country much better which side and I noticed that Donald Trump side was much better much preferable at least inflation is not as bad as this we don't have lower wages like this 
the borders was not as open as this crime rate was less than this like with normal sense of reason you will know which side for you to pick and Kamala Harris is always dodging interviews she's always dodging serious interviews only the one that will come to her favor only the one that she knows that oh okay they will really push more questions to her than the one she did with the view um Whoopi goes back you know you notice she's always dodging dodging um interviews serious interviews so we have to be very careful about who we vote for um <laughs> the main goal is uh, i don't know who you want to vote for but the main goal is to make america great and so you have to be very careful and decide properly comment down below think about this video give us a thumbs up share this video as many as you can subscribe to our channel i'll see you guys in the next video make sure you stay safe